Hello again. I'm Lou White. I'd like to encourage you to download a track that's free from torzone.net. It's four pages when you fold it in half. It's on one sheet of paper. And it's called the KJV, A Jabbering Lip and a Foreign Tongue. And it tells you that the Latin Vulgate, Dominus, is why the King James Version uses this word Lord. Dominus means Lord. And they just basically took the Latin Vulgate as Anglican Catholics and they generated this translation called the King James Version today. It was originally known as the authorized version, you know, authorized by King James, who was an Anglican Catholic. And it's still going on over there. The Anglican circus is still, is still there. They're Catholics. Protestants that think they're Catholics and reading a, a they, don't, they don't know that they're reading a Catholic document. It's Roman Catholic is what it is. And uh, Eusebius, Hieronymus, Sophronius is the one that, that translated the Latin Vulgate from 391 CE to 403 CE. So it was basically completed in 403 CE or AD. And the 1611 King James Version is the English version of the Latin Vulgate, a Catholic document. And there's errors in it that people don't want to acknowledge, like E-A-S-T-E-R. It's I think it's Acts 12, verse 3. There's no such word in any other translation, and certainly not in the, in the Greek or the, or the Hebrew, for sure. But uh, the Greek is not inspired. It's a translation, interpretation. That's what it is. Anyway, get this tract, and maybe you'll be able to uh, overcome some of the obstacles that you've been shown. Uh, one of the things is that the name from the Latin Vulgate, Dominus, has produced a worldwide idea that this word Lord is used in the text. And it's, not, it's inappropriate to use that for the name. The name was expunged. And the prefaces of your translations will show you that they inserted it in place of his name. Pretty serious stuff. Now, I'm going to open a study of a few other things that have been hidden from your eyes. Just hold on. All right. Here's the study. Things that have been hidden from your eyes. This phrase that we're beginning to hear all around the world, Baruch, Haba, Bashem, Yahuwah, is the transliterated Hebrew for blessed is the one who comes in the name of Yahuwah. That's a, originally a citation from Psalm 118, verse 26. In that context, the name Yahuwah is being described as the stone the builders rejected. Yahusha entered the city on a young donkey, and the crowds were yelling the phrase, Baruch HaBab Hashem, Yahuwah, and the Pharisees were offended because the name Yahuwah was being pronounced out loud, which they had forbidden. And they told him to rebuke this throng, yelling this phrase. Yahusha told them if they had kept silent, the stones would cry out these words. Now stones, and that's a reference to the stone the builders rejected, didn't it? Isn't it? In Matthew 23, verse 39, and Luke 13, verse 35, Yahushua told us, You will not see me again until you say, Baruch, Haba, Bashem, Yahuwah. Now that's interesting. And you should download this track, this PDF that I mentioned earlier, called the KJV a jabbering lip and a foreign tongue from this site torazone.net just look for the PDFs and they're free you can get them downloaded in a jiffy 
Read the preface of your translation. The translators admit hiding the name of Yahuwah from your eyes, replacing it with L-O-R-D. And there's more behind that. There's a reason. That's why they call him Adoni or Aduni and uh, Kyrios. They all mean Lord. And they're really referring to the controversy at Mount Carmel, which was between the priests of Bel and the and and and, and Aliyahu, Elijah, as they call him. And uh, here's another thing they hide from your eyes. It's actually a word on the cover, and usually in the title pages of most translations, B I B L E. It's used in many videos, and it's a demonic name. Do you know the origin of this term? It's not in the text. It's not written in the words of truth. Do you, and it's not in any translations either. Do you know the origin? Well, it's a port city used for sexual tourism, where a temple existed where merchants would stop off and drop their merchant uh, items and uh, they would go into this pagan temple and uh, they had male and female prostitutes that s serviced these merchants and uh, anyway this deity's name is going to be shown to you. The city was called B-Y-B-L-O-S named after the deity and the word B-I-B-L-E is not used anywhere in the original Hebrew, nor is it a word found in any of the world's translations. B-Y-B-L-I-A is the fertility deity whose temple was located in B-Y-B-L-O-S, a town named for their deity. It's now called um, some other word that starts with a G, but it's a coastal town. Therefore, the town was a, on a coast port that exported papyrus. And that's where the papyrus was produced in that city. So the Greek merchants used the name of the city for their word for paper, B-I-B-L-E and book. People are calling the word of Yahuwah by the term for a pagan fertility deity or demon. And when they learn how it happened, like I'm explaining to you, they make all kinds of excuses. Many name their, their ministries after this word for a female idol. The Hebrew prophets refer to scripture as the writing of truth in the words kathab amath. Amath is truth and kathab is the Hebrew word for writing. See an interlinear text at Daniel 10, verse 21. And there's a little image of what this deity may have uh, been broadcast as. Anyway, who is the B-I-B-L-E named after? The Romans knew her as B-Y-B-L-O-S, female deity of knowledge, libraries, and writing, among other things. The Greeks newer by the name of K-Y-P-R-I-S. So she is well loved and they built an entire city after her and it's called B-Y-B-L-O-S in Lebanon, a few miles north of Beirut. Now, they're building another temple over there in order to sacrifice animals. They're, holding, they're waving chickens over their head at the moment. But uh, anyway, a physical third temple. They're not going to have an ark? Well, with his, his last breath, Yahushua canceled animal blood offerings for sin and the former priesthood that offered it. He made it obsolete. See Hebrews chapter 8, verse 13. The third temple is being built without hands and is being done by Yahusha, who is already making his Nazarene 
aware of the secret of Allahim, which is Mashiach in you. We are living stones built up as a temple by him. We're being raised up all over the earth in preparation for his arrival. We are to announce his coming and welcome him as we announce him to the inhabitants of the earth as every eye witnesses his coming. Quote, he shall swallow up death forever and Aduni Yahuwah shall wipe away the tears from all faces and take away the reproach of his people from all the arets, earth. For Yahuwah has spoken, and it shall be in that yom day. See, this is our Allahim. We have waited for him, and he saves us. This is Yahuwah. We have waited for him. Let us be glad and rejoice in his deliverance. Unquote. Yashayahu, or Isaiah, 25, verses 8 and 9. He will release the captives from their delusions and doctrines of demons. Demons are real, but not for long. They're going to be held for a thousand years after he comes, and then they're going to be destroyed. So there won't be demons anywhere ever again. That's why they're so desperate. A shadow of things to come. What does that mean? Well, it's an outline, a shadow outline, or a format that is about redemption. The redemptive shadows are being fulfilled by Yahusha, and they are the shadow of things to come for the body of Mashiach. Do not let anybody incriminate, that means judge, do, do not let anyone judge you for observing them. This is at Colossians 2, verses 16 through 23, if you'll read those texts. The appointed times or appointments given for mankind to understand our redemption are neglected and substituted for mankind's rebellious fertility celebrations. The trees that they drag in in the winter and bring into their tree into their home and decorate it with silver and gold and prop it up. And they bow down to it as they put their gifts under it. As they did in the forest originally, they would put gifts under every tr green tree. The egg and bunny, it, I S T H. AR celebration is a very obvious one. They put their little bunny rabbits out, teach their children. Bunny rabbits are fertility symbols, and eggs are also, just in case you haven't noticed. They have nothing to do with Yahusha, or his resurrection for that matter. The resurrection is the first fruits, which you'll find out about if you observe the redemptive festivals. It's during the festival of matzah, unleavened bread. For the appointed times that are happening this year, with their meetings, here's a link for a free PDF to download, right there. You can go to TorahZone.net and look for PDFs, and then in the first, uh, the second or third line down, you'll see appointed times, 2024, and you can download that just you, as you could the other track. Now here's the history of the three-headed monster. And this is of course discussing the Hindu trinity, Nimrod, Semiramis, and Tammuz, which was really about reincarnation. That's what it is to the Buddhists. Anyway, the best analogy of the trinity doctrine is its origin. Nimrod, Semiramis, and Tammuz and all the rest of the pagan worship of the host of heaven, which is shown to people as the zodiac. Zodiac actually means living animals, a zoo of animals that are apparently are depicted by connecting dots in the sky. That's nonsense. Uh, it's definitely not happening. It's not real, but it's imagined. It's a strong delusion. You don't want to teach your children about the zodiac. 
but uh, it's witchcraft. It's rebellion. Yahuwah is one. And that's the greatest commandment. Hear, O Yisrael. Yahuwah, our Elohim, Yahuwah is one. Now, that one is not a plurality of any kind. It doesn't mean one committee. It means one. But teachers have turned his words into wormwood and have filled the earth with their doctrine. The Council of Nicaea in 325 CE was the official entry point of the concept of, quote, one G.O.D. in three persons, unquote, introduced by Athanasius of Alexandria. And he was a, f a philosopher, a young one at that. He was 27 when he attended the Council of Nicaea. Athanasius was dubbed the father of orthodoxy. Now, orthodoxy just simply means straight teaching or straight doctrine. But it's, uh, it's impossible for Athanasius to be the father of straight teaching. Who is the father of straight teaching? Yahushua, our only teacher. So he alone is the father of orthodoxy. Yahuwah is Yahushua HaMashiach, and every knee will bow to him one day soon. Here's some of those trinities. They're expressed in the Persian, Celtic, Hindu, Egyptian, and in all the other uh, Nimrod religions. Is Yahuwah Yahushua HaMashiach? Philippians 2 is a wonderful chapter to read in its entirety when translated correctly. One part says, the name which is above every name, that at the name of Yahushua, every knee should bow, of those in heaven, and of those on the arrests, and of those under the arrests, and every tongue should admit that Yahuwah is Yahushua HaMashiach, to the esteem of Yahuwah the Father. In the name of Yahushua, the Father gets all the esteem because He is our Deliverer. At first, the very first Nazarene had no idea who Yahushua actually is. But it is revealed to those Yahushua chooses to reveal it. Matthew eleven twenty seven, as He said, The Father, Son, and Ruach HaKodesh are one person. And the name is singular that we call on for our deliverance. And that name is the one name or person under heaven given among men that we are delivered in, Yahushua. He is the image of Yahuwah, the eternal king, and Ruach HaKadosh. Who is the king of Yisrael? It's Who has always been the king of Yisrael? Well, Yahuwah. And as our deliverer, we use a suffix, sh, sh, from Yasha, to add to it the end of his name in the name that he came in and he was born and walked the earth in, Yahusha, our deliverer. Clarify your identity, okay? That's what we're doing. We're clarifying someone's identity. <laughs> okay, he is the image of Yahuwah, the eternal king in Ruach HaKadosh. Acts 20, verse 28, tells us the Ruach HaKodesh shed his own blood. That's his own blood. It's not a woman. It's not a female. It's a him. And this Ruach HaKodesh fills the universe. His creation. His creation is in him. And he is in his creation. He's everywhere. He's right there next to you. He's all around you, actually. And he shed his own blood to purchase us. For more, watch this video as well. Miracle of Immersion. Baptism. Your pledge. There's the link. Yahuwah's coming appointments. Some years, the next new month, after the Tekufa, or equinox, makes the new year seem to begin later. Then the appointed times in the middle of the month make it seem even later. The study confuses 
many people, but the older brother, Yehuda, has been doing this for thousands of years correctly, as we see Yehusha was on the same schedule with of those around him long ago. The only difference for us is now we have all these calendar specialists jumping up about their take on things. Download a free track for the upcoming new year here. And it should explain why uh, explain many details on this subject. Now at the same site, torazone.net, look at the top and you'll see a drop down for PDFs. And this is free. You can download this for free and study it and prove it using scripture. It's called Appointed Times 2024. And, uh, well, we'll pick this up later on the vowels. Uh, there are the consonants and the vowels of the Hebrew alphabet. There are vowels. The 22 letters of Hebrew are, uh, some of them are vowels, but they deny that. And uh, in this uh, next upcoming video, I'll probably show you what that what that means. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the very next video. Bye.